This is Ashton Marcus, and I'm at the International City Theater's season premiere of End of the Rainbow. Hello, my name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And you are? John Henry Davis, director of um, End of the Rainbow. Excellent. Okay, I saw the performance. I loved it. Question I have for you is, uh, well, first of all, could I have a, a bio of you? Well, I've spent most of my life in New York directing. I directed um, Oz for HBO. I've directed uh, regional theater. I've directed uh, uh, some shows off Broadway, and you know, so I've, I've had a wide experience in directing musicals and new plays all over the country. Great. Okay, so uh, why did, why Judy Garland? Why did you decide to direct a play about Judy Garland? You know, I think it's a phenomenon of our times and the present times too. The way that we look at celebrities and the way we treat celebrities and what they go through to be celebrities. I think of the last days of Michael Jackson. He was coming back to do this incredible comeback, you know, and he had to get himself up for it and he couldn't sleep and he needed more drugs and that's what finished him. So it's what, sort of what, what we do to celebrities and what they have to do in order to keep going. But I think it's a fascinating subject and is very relevant to today. Okay. It's about my show, I cover 80% of all theater. I cover the bottom 80%, <laughs> which means I do community theater, non-equity, some equity like this. Uh-huh. I was wondering, what, what kind of advice can you give to my audience? Some of them have been working in community theater since they were five. They've been doing it for 15 years. They don't get paid, yeah. but they love it, and they yeah, keep yeah. doing it. Well, what, what kind of advice can you give them? Well, there's nothing wrong with, with doing theater and not getting paid. It, you know, uh, I, I think that if you want to be in professional theater, you need a certain skill set. And people are looking for certain skills in certain shows. In musical theater, they look for certain skill set. For straight plays, they also look for a certain skill set, and and I think that people need to acquire those skills in school or in performances, and then they can be competitive if you really want to be in the professional theater. But if you don't, that's all right. It's okay to just want to perform and be, uh, you know, and, and and be an actor in, in these other venues. And sometimes these productions are wonderful. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. My name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with KUCI, 88.9 Hi. FM. Hi. Yes. And you are? I'm Gigi Birmingham. Great. Oh, yeah. And uh, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Well, I'm an, I'm an actor. I live in Pasadena, California. I'm married, and I'm, I'm currently in a play at International City Theater Long Beach called um, End of the Rainbow, in which I play Judy Garland at the end of her life. I saw the, the play, and I thought it was very good. Oh, good. Well, thank you. What do you think of Julie Garland's life? Do you think of it as a tragedy, or do you think? You know, it is? she always said when people would say, "Oh, you know, I'm sorry for all the tragedies in your life," and she would laugh it off and say, I, "I have a wonderful life." Especially when she had her children around her, you know, towards the end of her life, she just adored her children. She'd had a, a mother who, um, how shall I say, uh, according to all the biographies, didn't treat her lovingly, and controlled her, and manipulated her, and even gave her pills to keep her going, going 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 for the studio to make her movies but when she had her own children and when she had loving relationships which did work sometimes in her life um, she was surrounded by people who loved her that made all the difference to her so she had some very happy moments and she she would have argued that she had a beautiful wonderful life not a tragic life it was tragic by our standards because she was a drug addict and that killed her and uh, she's not the first star that this has happened to you know it's the Michael Jackson syndrome it's the problem of having people around you who are always always going to be willing to give you what you want because you're such a huge star people want to make you happy they want to participate in your life in whatever way they can and you know that was that was the tragedy in her life was that she couldn't escape her own stardom I think 
I actually worked at three movie studios, and I remember I was at lunch with some of the executives and some of the stars. The topic actually came up. Someone just blurted it out. Why do you think so many stars are on drugs? Is it the lifestyle, or is it that basically as a serious artist, you should be suffering? What would you comment if that topic came up? Well, my own opinion uh, about that is that the artistic sensibility is one of sensitivity. I mean, you are a hypersensitive person, so you're more vulnerable to criticism. You're more vulnerable to worrying about the state of the world. You're just vulnerable. So that type of personality would be more prone to need something, an external thing that changes how you feel. You know, you want to relax once in a while. So you take a drink or you take a pill. It, it, it makes sense to me that the artistic sensibility would be the one that becomes addicted because it's hard to live with the discomfort of being oversensitive. It's just a hard a hard thing to do. And, and um, you know, Ethan Hawke was on... Um, a talk show recently. Who was it? I'm forgetting, I'm forgetting his name. Um, and he said that it comes at a cost. Being being a performer, being an actor, being a an entertainer, there's a great cost to you psychically. And I think that's also why uh, many of them, many of us, turn to alcohol and drugs. It's just you need you want to get off the train once in a while, and sometimes you you can't. Okay, I have a friend who, who's, who's the father of a child prodigy. I look at Julie Garland's life. Her parents forced her. They drugged her. Yeah. What kind of advice can you give in regard to that? What kind of a prodigy? prodigy he's a piano. He's a musical prodigy. He's piano. He, he play, he's, he's six years old and he plays he play Beethoven's Ninth Symphony. Already. That's amazing. Well, that's a great gift. And, of course, you want to encourage him and work him hard and all those things. And the only advice would be just to have a little balance in his life. His life is not going to be balanced because he's going to be spending so much of his time doing that beautiful thing that he does, much more than the other kids will be out, you know, doing whatever. But some time to just completely forget about it. Some normal time with other kids. Some time where you just let him be a sloth. Some time where you, you know, drag him away from it if he can't help himself from, from doing it. If he becomes a, a, you know, workaholic, which he may well do because he'll be in love with, with his art. Um, force him away from it. Force him to have some normalcy in his life because if he doesn't establish it now, then he will have trouble later and he will be unhappy because he won't... You won't have relationships. You know, lots of stuff can happen if you don't have some some balance in your life. Also, my theater show, I cover theater. Mm -hmm. I cover 80% of all theater, the bottom 80%. Community theater, non-equity, some equity like this one here. Some of my listeners, some of the people I interview, they have been acting in theater since they were five, and they've been working for 15 years. They, they don't get paid anything. What kind of advice can you give them? Where are they? What, what are they doing? In They're the community theater. theater. So they do They're community theater. Acting, acting since they were five. They've been singing, acting since they were five. Are they enjoying it? They love it. Then what's the problem? <laughs> no, what is the problem? Is it about money or is it about doing something that you love? If you want to be an amateur and do what you love, that is a wonderful, wonderful thing. It's a whole other thing to decide it's going to be your profession, to pursue it professionally. Then you enter the big bad world of the business of entertainment. I encourage people if they enjoy it and they get satisfaction from doing amateur productions, why would you force yourself into the big bad business world where your opportunities will be slim, competition will be great, and uh, you know, it's, it's a lot of challenges that you don't, I don't know what it's like in the amateur world, but I'm assuming that hopefully it's a lot more fun, laughs, and the pressure isn't there because um, it's not about making a lot of money, right? So have fun. Fun and do it. Okay. You, one, yeah. One last question. Then. Yeah. They also tell me all the people I interview, you have to do this because you love it. Because they can never pay you enough money if you don't love this. If you ever stop loving this, you should get out of it. Do you think Judy Garland should have listened to that? 
I think she tried to get out, but um, you know, she started performing at the age of two. And it was so much a part of her, it was her gift to the world. Her gift was sharing her her abilities, her musical abilities, her acting abilities. And with that, and I think she just, you know, she needed to share that, but in order to do it, she had to be in an environment that was toxic to her. That was the problem. That was the problem. She couldn't get off the train. She couldn't get off the train. Thank you very much for being on the show. My pleasure, my pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I'm Ashton Marcos, KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Wallace. So, how are you? I'm doing fine. And basically, who do you play? Um, I play the AMC, the Porter, and the... Uh, suddenly forgot what else I played. Isn't that amazing? Oh, the radio interviewer. So I play the multi character comic relief. Great. Well, actually, do you want to interview me then? <laughs> no, I would, I would. But I'd have to use my British accent. It would be very, very, very difficult with a mouthful of food, I'd say. <laughs> so, uh, what do you enjoy most about these uh, this, this ensemble? Um, well, I'd have to say I enjoyed uh, Gigi Birmingham. She was the epitome of professional. She was absolutely lovely, always looked beautiful, always acted like a complete professional. I, I, I couldn't say enough great things about her. And I, well, really all of the cast. But um, speaking of which, have you seen Brent? Have you seen Brent? No. I, I haven't. Yeah, the, yeah. yeah. I, no, I've been looking for him all night. I wanted to congratulate him. I thought that opening went really well. Did you have fun, by the way? You saw it, right? I loved it. Oh, great. Where were you sitting? I was actually seeing Orchestra Fifth Row. Oh, great, great. So you had a nice view of the stage and all that. Right, right, right. Oh, good, good, good. Oh, I'm sorry, this is your interview. Huh? Yeah, right, yeah, you're interviewing me now. I'm just, I guess I'm in character now. Okay. Um, again, uh, my show, I actually uh, cover community, th- I cover 80% of all theater, but I cover the bottom 80%, mm-hmm. which means all community theater, non-equity, some equity like this one, mm-hmm. and uh, I, o- I, I, I cover a lot of ensemble players, because a lot of them are ensemble players. Yeah. And the questions I always ask them are things like, what? What can you add to a play? Because you, know, you only have like eight lines and all that. Mm-hmm. Now, as you, as a professional equity actor, what do you add to a play? Well, you mean what do I add as a, as a bit part, as a small character? Um, well, uh, e- even though I only had, you know, let's say, uh, I'm not sure exactly how many lines, but I think it was something like ten lines or less, um, those... Roles, those small roles are instrumental in moving a scene forward. The uh, the ASM, for instance, he comes out in the scene and immediately he's uh, terrified. Where's Judy Garland? The show's got to start. Where is where is she? Now, even though my one line is, "I'm looking, Brian. I'm looking." That already that sets the tone and expresses to everyone that there's immediate urgency in this scene. So, I mean that that that's what I bring to it. I bring a sense of urgency and I move the scene forward. And although you may never see me again in that scene, it sets the tone. Uh, again, what kind of advice can you give to my my viewers and again my other actors that I interview in community theater? What's the best advice you can give to them? Uh, well, um, I would say if you love it, keep doing it. If you don't love it, keep doing it. <laughs> no, no, but really, if you if you find yourself getting discouraged and you say, man, maybe this isn't for me, keep going. Don't make any immediate decisions. Don't, don't decide immediately that this isn't for you. Just keep going because even if it's not really working for you right now, you're still creating something artistically, and that is important for the world we live in today. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful night. Yeah, well, you to know him I did. Um, you know, he he did write a book. Yeah. Um, so. So, because we were talking, and I said, "Well, did he really love her? I mean, at the beginning, you know, you took her off drugs, and right. you took her off booze, but then you gave in and you plowed her with this stuff. Right. And because did your feelings change? I think you know, he was just in a position that. He had no other choice. You know, he had a lot on the line. He understood her financial situation probably a lot better than she did. 
was um, was he in for it even if she didn't have money? I think they loved each other. I yeah. really do. Yeah. You know, and that's what I really did want to stay true to and yeah. play. And yeah. both it Gigi did. and I, you know, we're, yeah. we're talking about this. And I know it's a tough situation for the character, but um, I, I we wanted to let the love shine you through. You were really authentic. Oh, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Ashton Marcus. I'm with, hey, K- Ashton. Oh, I'm with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. Very cool. And you are? I'm Michael Rubenstone. Oh, great. Could you tell uh, my audience a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, I'm uh, I'm an actor uh, from Philadelphia, born and raised. Uh, been out acting in LA for about ten years now. Um, done a lot of did a lot of stage in New York and done more television uh, out here. But I, my love is the theater, so uh, it's great to have the opportunity to work at ICT. Great. Could you also tell me uh, the role you played? I played Mickey Deans. And could I have a brief synopsis of him? Uh, Mickey Deans uh, was Judy Garland's fifth and final husband. Um, I really liked the guy because he, he was a blue-collar Jersey boy, uh, which I can certainly relate to. And uh, he ran a club in New York uh, in the 60s that was very popular called Arthur. And uh, that's where he met Judy Garland. And they started dating casually. And sure enough, the relationship sort of elevated over time. And before you knew it, they were in love. And um, and they decided to get married. And, you know, I would say that he was somewhat op- opportunistic, you know, seeing the opportunity to take Judy Garland and revitalize her career. But at the same time, I think that he really did have feelings for this woman. Uh, it comes through in the book, and I do my best to convey it in the performance. I have a question. Why theater? You can make more money, say, in movies or television. You get more fame there. Why theater? Well, I, I, you know, I just love the opportunity to work with actors in the theater because it's just... It's the best environment to have a real moment. There are no take backs, there's no cuts. You know, you have to think on your feet, you have to be instinctual and be as in the moment as you possibly can, which is what acting is all about to me. It's being fresh, it's being in the moment, it's being present and working with your fellow actor. Not to say you can't do that on television, but there's an immediacy in the theater that's just, um, it's the greatest feeling. Also, uh, my show, my, I cover about uh, I cover eighty percent of all theater out there. I cover the bottom eighty percent, which is community theater, non-equity, some equity like this, and uh, some of my viewers uh, and the people I interview, they're like community theater actors who have been acting since they were five or seen since they were five. They don't get paid anything, and they've been doing it for fifteen years. Is there any advice you can give them? I would just say, you know, keep just keep doing what you're doing. If you love what you do, then you know the money will come. Um, but just keep doing what you love and work with people that inspire you. Work with theaters that consistently put out good work. Tackle new works, um, and you will be satisfied and fulfilled on a spiritual, mental level. Um, and, you know, I always say the money will come, you know. So just, just keep doing what you love. Okay. Thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you. Yeah. I'm yes. Ashton Marcus with KUCI 88.9 FM in Irvine. And you are? Excellent. Karen Desai, Great. artistic director and producer of International City Theatre. Great. Celebrating our 30th anniversary with the opening of End of the Rainbow. Okay. And could I have a little bio of you? My MFA is from UCI in directing. I have um, continuing education, including at Stanford University. I was one of 50 arts administrators to take a nonprofit executive um, course in at their graduate school of business and certificates in arts administration and all the things you need besides all the the artistic part so I started as an actor and director and now producer I am I actually read a, a little bit about your theater international theater yes. and in a short period of time you've actually come quite a way uh, quite a ways Yes, we have. And in fact, it's been a, 
<laughs> a journey of passion because if you don't have that, you don't. There's so much else you have to deal with in this role as producer. Um, the art is what it drives you, and you have to have that's where it starts and you have to have a passion for that and theater is so important because it's still a vital platform for freedom of speech it's the most human art form it's people to people and in this generation of computers and isolation it's so important that we have that connection and maintain that connection and introduce the next generation to that as well you know, I'm going to a theater tomorrow, the uh, uh, the Whittier Theater. It's been around for 92 years. I go to a lot of theaters that have been around for 50 years. Your wow. theater hasn't been around that long. What is your secret? I mean, what advice can you give them? Fiscal responsibility, get a great board of directors, and make sure you're working within your budget. It's very tempting. Everybody always wants more money, and it's and you and you want to give it to them but you really have to have fiscal responsibility so that you can stay in business you know because it's not just the main stage that we do we do five main stage productions but we do six education programs for the community as well a third grade program alone that one program last year we did 405 classroom visits to third grade so we reach every demographic from 4 to 104 Great. Okay. So, uh, well, what's up next for your uh, theater? I'm so excited because, well, I'm going to be directing it. It's the West Coast premiere of Abigail 1702. It's an imagined sequel to Arthur Miller's The Crucible. It's the same writer that wrote Spider-Man for Broadway and Glee for TV. So it's it's a very um, imaginative um tale and it's really her search for redemption because she was the one that cried witch and sent so many to their peril (laughs) during the Salem witch trials yeah any last words to your alumnus well come support International City Theater I mean we have alum that designed the set for this show and alum that are producing the show so I hope to see lots of them and and if they're students at UCI, it's only... That's about the same price as a movie. There you go. <laughs> Plus, also, would you rather bring your date to see The Incredible Hulk 5 or Dumber Dumber 3 or re- have them see Abigail? <laughs> you know, theater is so important because it, it supports a more educated and harmonious society, you know, and I'm all for education, and I'm tired of the dumbing down of the you know, America. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much for being on the show. Thank you so very much for asking. End of the Rainbow will be playing at International City Theater from February 18th to March 15th. For more information, go to www.internationalcitytheater.org 